Greetings, my name is Monty Martin, and welcome back to Isadora 101. In this series of video tutorials, I'm going to be showing you the core features and functionality of Isadora 3. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about how we can build a custom control interface for Isadora using the control panel feature. We've been controlling Isadora so far with lots of different methods by using the keyboard, our mouse, and different toggles that we've created within Isadora's main interface. This is all well and good for you because you know how to work with Isadora. But sometimes once we're up and running for a show, we might want to build an interface that lets us control Isadora more quickly, perhaps only interfacing with the parts that we need to change or modify during a performance. Or in many other cases, you may be handing off Isadora to an operator, perhaps a technician or stage manager who is familiar with Isadora, but perhaps not fully trained with Isadora. And you want to create a streamlined interface that puts their attention just on the things that matter during the show and hides all of the other interface so that nothing can get accidentally edited or changed while the show is up and running. The control interface is the perfect way to do this. In order to edit the control interface, we need to go up to the view option here in Isadora and click show controls. When we do this, you'll notice that two things happened to my patch. First of all, all my actors disappeared and the actor toolbox has actually changed to a much shorter and completely different list. This is the control edit mode. And these new actors over here are the control panel actors that we will use to build our custom interface. Once we built this interface, the mode that we are looking at now is usually what we will want to leave our operator in. And if we were to save our Isadora project like this, it would open up in this control mode by default the next time the project is opened. But while we are building our control interface, we actually want to use a different option so we can see both the actors we've been editing and the control panel at the same time. To do this, we will go to view and right underneath where it says hide controls, which is how we can return back to the main actor interface, we can find this other mode that we can activate whether we are seeing the controls or not called actor control split. And in this mode, Isadora splits in half. We see our actors on one side and we see our control interface that we're building on the other. This can be one of those cases where having an extra large monitor can be pretty helpful to see everything that you're working on at the same time. But otherwise we can scroll around to find exactly what we want to edit. So I have some of the actors rigged up that we've looked at previously. And what I will just do is, uh, this is the same set of actors that we were looking at in our video effects tutorials. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show my stages and I'm going to start my live capture so that I can see what I created before. Hello, there we go. And for now, what we'll do is I think all I wanna do right now is perhaps just turn these effects on and off. We know that we can do that by changing the bypass of the threshold, dots, and motion blur actors to activate and deactivate these different effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a button to do that. I'm going to grab one of the buttons here from the control panel actors. And once that's in, I can position it just like any other actor. I just simply click, drag, and drop it in. So I've got two buttons here. I can move them around and delete the ones that I don't need. And with many of the control interface actors, I can actually edit them by increasing their size. There'll usually be a little white box that you can toggle there to change how large or small they are. Now this button is just called button and you'll notice that it has a little number one here. This is the control ID number of that control. And as you might've noticed before, when I brought a second button into the scene, it was numbered button two. And if I brought a third one into the scene, it gets a little number, number three. In order to assign these buttons to my actors, I can just take a very easy step like this. 
I click on the control ID number and hold, and I get a line, just like when I am connecting two actors together to link them. I'm clicking and holding, and I'm going to release that line on the actor property that I want to connect it to, release. Now notice that the bypass of my threshold actor now has a little number one attached to it, indicating that it is associated with control one on my control panel. And now I'll connect another one. I'll connect the second button here to my dots actor and my third button to my motion blur. Actor. So at this stage, I have now connected all three of my buttons to one of the actors in the scene. But when I click my buttons, just one mouse click, they don't operate. That's because we're actually still in edit mode and we will need to go to controls, disable edit mode so that these buttons actually work. You'll notice that the control panel actor toolbox has been hidden. That is the dead ringer that you are now in control mode, not edit mode. And all of these buttons now work. So now let's try just clicking one of them. If I click the first button, oh, it didn't stay in place. When I click and hold it down, you'll see that the threshold is disabled. When I click and hold down the middle button there, the dots effect is disabled. And when I click and hold down the last effect there, the motion blur effect is disabled. But I have to click and hold each time. Let's edit our buttons and sort this one out. I'm now going to re-enable edit mode. And to change how my buttons behave, I'm going to double click them. In this menu now, I can now edit the properties of my button. I can give my control a title. I can also change the font and the font size as well of that button. So I'm going to change it to Arial, maybe make it a 14 point font. And I can change the button text. So I'm going to go and give this the label here and I'm going to actually say it's threshold. And finally, I can change the button's mode, whether it is a momentary or a toggle. When a button is set to momentary, it behaves just as we saw before. But now that it's set to a toggle, it will be on or off and it will stay clicked down after I press it. You can imagine this as kind of the difference between a keyboard button, which flips back up after you press it, versus so, sort of a light switch, which stays in place with wherever you left it. If it's on toggle mode, it stays in place. When it's on momentary mode, it behaves more like a key that you press. We can even change the style and color of the button if we want to. I'll click OK. There's my threshold actor. And now I'll do the same thing for the dots. I'll just dots. And we will make the font size a bit larger here. And I will switch it to toggle. And on the last one, we will change the font size there. Call that blur. And switch it to toggle as well. And hit OK. And there we go. So now that I've put the buttons and labeled them and changed their properties, let's see how they behave. I will go to controls, disable edit mode. Now, when I click threshold, it's off or on, off or on. And when I hit dots, off or on, off or on. Same for the blur. So this way I can actually see what my effect looks like with all of those effects turned off or when I turn them all back on again. This is a wonderful technique just when you are experimenting with effects. And we can go a little bit further than, than this too. I'm going to disable, uh, go back to enable the edit mode again. And I'll just show you one of the other properties here. I can bring in a slider as well from my control panel toolbox. And I'm going to connect this slider to the dot size of my dots actor. And now I will disable edit mode. And now the slider allows me to decide how large or how small my dots are going to be.
Now, if you want to mess around with the various properties on your actors and build a control interface where you can control these things, this is super handy. But I also like using the control panel for a few more practical reasons as well. I'll show you a couple of these controls right now. Beyond just creating buttons and sliders that we can use to manipulate our actors, we can also create a few useful pre-made control actors that are particularly useful for simply controlling our entire show. First amongst these is the simple next cue button, which works like any of the buttons, but it immediately creates a go button that is very reassuring for many stage managers and operators. This button also has a sister button in the form of the previous cue button, where if you need to have a back button and a forward button in your project, just drop those right in. Now, you might also be collaborating with other folks who prefer to have a very big visual of the scene list so that they can monitor the cues. And while the scene list at the bottom is great for this purpose, we can also just bring in a control actor here called the scene select. And I will need to expand this right away, but you can see that the scene select creates a list of all of the scenes that I've created in my project in a vertical orientation, which is quite reassuring for many stage managers who may be familiar with other show control interfaces. It also indicates the current scene with a nice reassuring green arrow. So for if you are working on a more traditional project with scenes and cues and handing your project off to a stage manager, simply building a control interface that has the, the scene select control actor and the go and the previous buttons might just be all they need to feel like they've got control over Isadora while they're operating the show. Also, I also like to use the comment act, the comment control actor here. I can simply double click this one to create some writing of my own. And hello, sometimes this is useful simply for creating labels or leaving instructions as well as to how to operate the show. One final tip that can be very useful, especially if you're doing the handoff, is you might be used to using the output hide stages and output show stages for showing and hiding these stages for your Isadora project. But one thing that can be quite handy when you are handing the project off is to create buttons for this in your control interface. And to do that, you will need an actor not in the control panel, but a basic scene actor called show hide stages. Pretty handy. And so now we can make a button and we'll label this one show stages. Hit OK. And then I'll make another button here and we'll call that one hide stages. And then we'll plug these both into their respective spots on the show, hide stages. So now I have quite simply, when I disable edit mode here, I've got a show stages button and a hide stages button that work real nice and easily for us, for anyone who might be running or operating our show. One thing that is quite unique about the control panel is that it is universal across all the scenes in your project. There's some exceptions to that. We'll talk about that in the future. But if I go back to the beginning of my show, my pre-show queue, you'll notice that while my actors have disappeared from the scene, my control panel has stayed the same. And I can press the go button to go to the next scene, just as we did in our previous projects. Now, one of the things to be aware of is that I'll have to link up these control buttons for every individual scene. The actors don't keep their associations, and so a button on your control panel can change behavior from scene to scene to scene to scene. So this requires a little bit of project planning 
to make sure of how you're going to use your buttons and how you're going to use your sliders. One thing that you'll notice is that in this city flyover scene, I don't have a show high stages. I don't have a show or hide stages actor placed in the scene yet. And so these buttons that I made to show and hide the stages, they don't do anything. And if I go in and add a show and high stages button, I'm actually going to need to link it up first in order for it to function. Just putting the actor into the scene won't do that. Now, if if I were to go back to my effects scene and grab the show hide stages actor that I created here and copy it and then paste it into a new scene, those associations are maintained. So this can be an area where using something like a user actor to contain all the actors that are associated with your control panel can be a very handy tip, especially as you're building complex patches with lots of things going on and things that might need to update across your entire project while you are editing it. The control panel is a fantastic way to take control of your project in a graphical way. When edit mode is disabled, you'll find that you have a couple extra great options here, like the background as well as the comment that you can use to actually make this colorful and really, really easy to read. It can be a completely custom graphically designed interface for you to use. And once you have disabled that split between the two and you have disabled edit mode, you get a very, very streamlined interface that looks far less intimidating for an operator or stage manager than all of the actors all arrayed doing their thing. So once you've built that nice, sophisticated interface, you'll find that handoff phase of your project when you're done all your designing and editing and ready for someone else to take the reins of your project goes all that much smoother. That's all for this week's tutorial. Be sure to check out all of our other videos here on YouTube and visit the Trikotronics community forums to connect with more Isadora experts for even more tips and tricks. And we'll see you at the next workshop.